Hey everyone, so a few days ago I asked some of you guys if you want to see a video about a coding TV question and you basically said yes, so here it is. This is a question that's being asked at Facebook among other companies and the question is this. You're given two strings, each one representing a binary number, for example one zero and one, and you need to write a function that adds them together. So one zero plus one should be one one, just as an example. Uh, you need to do it in a way that doesn't uh, convert these strings into numbers. And we're going to call this function ba. And that condition of not converting them into numbers is kind of silly, but that's just the question. Another example would be this one. 101 plus 101 should be 1010. And if you want to try solving this problem by yourself, pause the video right here and feel free to use these unit tests that I wrote for this problem. I'm going to put a link to that in the description of this video. And here's my solution. The way I thought about this problem is how would I solve this problem if it was on paper? Well, I would you know write down these two numbers and then I would check the last digits first. And then I would go from there, you know just check them one by one and try to construct the result that way. And so we need to create a new variable, whether it's on paper or in your code, uh, called result, let's say. And we, we're going to start it with an empty string. And then we're going to have another variable called carry, which is going to keep track of if we have uh, a carry of 1 or not. So this is going to be either true or false. And then in this particular case, we're starting with these two digits and the result is empty right now. And then we go to this one, the result becomes zero and the carry becomes true. And then we can keep going that way. The result becomes one because we have carry and we have these two digits, zero and zero. And then we can go to the next digits. So this is the basics of my solution. And I think one thing to note is that it could potentially complicate things if one string is longer than the other one, for example, like this. And you know there, there are ways to deal with this case. But to simplify our code a little bit, I'm going to make sure that b1 is longer or the same length as b2. And if that's not the case, we're just going to swap these two variables. OK, so let's dive into my solution in Python here. Like I said earlier, I wrote a bunch of unit tests for this. So we have BA of 1 and 0. 1 plus 0 should be 1. 1 plus 1 should be 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 plus 1 should be 1, 0, 0, and so on. And currently, from my function, I'm returning 1. So some of these tests, most, most of these tests should fail. And that's actually true. My tests are failing. And now I'm going to write my solution. Like I said, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make sure that length of b1 is greater than or equal to b2. So if that's not the case, if b1's length is less than b2's length, then I'm going to swap these two variables just like that. And then, like I said earlier, I want to start at the last digit of the last digits of these two numbers. And then I want to go to the left one by one, just like that. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for i in range of length of b1. So this way, with this example, I would go from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. And we just need to convert it in a way that, that it goes from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. To do that, we can just do len b1. So the length of b1 minus 1 minus i. And I'm going to call this new variable i1. And we can make sure that this is correct 
by checking that when i is 0, so when we are starting this for loop, length of b1 is 4, and so i1 is going to be 3, which is this one. And we can do the same thing with b2 by saying i2 equals length of b2 minus 1 minus i. And when b1 is longer than b2, i2 is going to be a negative number at some point. But if that's the case, we can just ignore it. And before this for loop, we need to define results and carry. Carry is going to be false initially. And for result, I'm going to use a list or an array, depending on what language you're using. So this is going to keep track of the digits in the result. And then we're going to convert it into a string later. And then in the for loop, what I'm going to do in each loop is I'm going to count ones. And I'm going to set it to 0 at the beginning. So as an example, if we're looking at these two strings, and when i is 0, so when the loop starts, we're looking at these two digits, this one and this one. And we can see that we have two ones. And if we have carry, we it's sort of like having three ones. And you know, here, uh, the problem is a little bit vague. Uh, but I think it's okay to do this because we're not converting, you know, these strings into numbers, we're just counting the number of ones here. So I'm just going to go with this. So after that, I'm going to say if the current digit that we're looking at from b1 is 1, then add 1 to count ones. And do the same thing with b2. But here, we'll need to say if i2 is less than 0, we're going to ignore it. So we need to add this condition that says if i2 is greater than or equal to 0 and if that digit is 1, then add 1 to count 1. And then if carry is true, we're going to add 1 to count 1s as well. And then after that, Depending on the value of count ones, we can add a different different digit to result. So we're going to do that with if count ones mod two is zero. So if count ones is even, then that means it's either zero or two. So in that case, we're going to add zero to results. And else, we're going to add 1 to the result. And then if count ones is greater than 1, then the carry should be true. So we're going to set carry to true. And that's it for the for loop. And after the for loop, we're going to check if carry is true. If carry is true, we should append 1 to the result. And right now, result is reversed. So we need to, re we need to reverse it back with result.reverse. And then we need to convert it into a string with an empty string dot join result. And then we can just return that. OK, so hopefully this is going to work. Let's see by running this function. And it does. I passed all the tests. OK, so that's it for this video. Uh, sorry it's been a while since my last video, but let me know if you have any video requests for the future. And I'm going to clear this and turn this back to the code I had so that you can practice if you want to practice by yourself. I'm going to put this in the description below. Thank you as always for watching my videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.